All right, today on The Explainer, we're diving into something pretty amazing. The hidden rules, these brilliant solutions that engineers use to make sure the buildings all around us don't, well, you know, collapse. So let's just start with a question I think we've all asked ourselves at some point, right? How do we know that the buildings, bridges, and towers we use every single day are actually safe? I mean, really? Well, the answer is this incredible field called structural analysis. And it's kind of like being a detective, but for invisible forces. You see, every single structure is locked in this constant, invisible fight. It's being pushed, it's being pulled, twisted by things like gravity, wind, you name it. And the engineer's entire job is to make sure the structure always wins that fight. They have to prove it, on paper, using some pretty complex-looking math, but it all boils down to a few really core, elegant ideas. But what happens when those calculations go wrong? Well, the stakes are unbelievably high. Take this. Back in 2009, the Dallas Cowboys' entire training facility just collapsed right in the middle of a storm. And when they investigated, they found it was all because of a simple arithmetic error in the design calculations for wind. That, plus a few other careless mistakes, meant the building was just not designed to handle the real world. And it failed. So that brings us to the core of it. How do engineers actually manage all these crazy forces? Well, it all starts with one fundamental concept this perfect invisible balancing act. It's called equilibrium. Okay, so first things first, you have to know your enemy. And in structural engineering, the enemy is something called the load. Super simple, right? A load is just any force that a structure has to deal with. And these loads, they basically come in two main flavors. You've got your dead loads. Think of this as the structure's own weight. It's the permanent stuff, the steel, the concrete. It's not going anywhere. Then you have live loads. These are the temporary, unpredictable forces. It's us, people walking around. It's snow piling up on a roof or a wind slamming into the side of a building. And the whole trick is that the design has to be able to handle the absolute worst case combo of both of those things at the same time. And this right here, this is the single most important rule in all of structural safety. Now, I know the math might look a little intimidating, but the idea behind it is incredibly simple. For any structure to be stable, every single force acting on it has to cancel each other out perfectly. All the pushes, all the pulls, all the twists, they have to add up to zero. If they do, the structure is in what we call equilibrium. It's balanced. It's not going anywhere. Okay, so with that rule in our back pocket, let's see how engineers use it to solve the first level of structural puzzles. You know, the ones that are actually pretty straightforward. This first category of structure is called statically determinate. And honestly, the best way to think about it is like a solvable puzzle. It's a structure where you have just enough supports to keep it stable, nothing extra. And because of that, you can figure out every single unknown force inside it using only those three basic equilibrium equations we just looked at. It's clean. And a really classic way to solve these kinds of puzzles, especially for trusses, is something called the method of joints. It's exactly what it sounds like. You basically work your way through the structure one joint at a time. You find a joint that only has two forces you don't know, you apply those equilibrium equations to figure them out, and then boom, you use what you just learned to move to the next joint and solve that one. It's this awesome, logical, step-by-step -step chain reaction. Okay, that's the simple stuff, but what happens when engineers design something with more supports than it technically needs to just stand up? Well, something interesting happens. The structure gets a lot stronger, but the puzzle? The puzzle gets way, way trickier. And this is what brings us to the next level, statically indeterminate structures. These are buildings and bridges that have extra, or what engineers call redundant, supports. And here's the problem. Suddenly, you have more unknown forces than you have equations to solve them. Those three simple equilibrium equations, they're not enough anymore. The basic rules just don't work. So you're probably asking, why on earth would an engineer make their own life harder like this? Well, just look at this comparison. The beam on top, that's our simple determinant one. Easy to analyze. But the one on the bottom, with that extra support right in the middle, that beam is way stronger and stiffer. You can handle a lot more load, and it won't bend nearly as much. And the benefit isn't small. It's huge. We're talking about a beam that might bend only one-fourth as much as the simpler version. That's a massive advantage in the real world. Four times less deflection? That's incredible. So this brings us right back to the big question, doesn't it? If those fundamental rules of equilibrium aren't enough to solve the puzzle anymore, then how in the world do engineers figure out what's going on inside these tougher, stronger structures? Well, to crack these much harder puzzles, engineers came up with two just brilliant solutions. They're called the force method and the displacement method. 
And again, don't worry about deciphering the math here. The key takeaway is that these are two totally different ways of thinking about the problem. They attack it from completely different angles. The force method, as the name suggests, focuses on finding unknown forces. The displacement method, on the other hand, focuses on finding unknown movements. Okay, so the force method. It's kind of like a brilliant thought experiment. Here's what you do. First, you just pretend that extra support isn't there. You mentally remove it. All of a sudden, your impossible puzzle becomes a simple, solvable one again. Great. Now, you calculate how much the beam bends or sags down where that support used to be. Then, for the final step, you figure out exactly how much force you'd need to push that sag right back up to where it started. And guess what? That force is the exact unknown force from that support you were trying to find all along. It's so clever. The displacement method, though, it completely flips the problem on its head. It says, forget about the forces for a minute. Instead, the things we don't know, our unknowns, are the tiny little movements and rotations happening at every joint. You then build a bunch of equations that link these tiny movements to the forces using a property of the material called stiffness. Once you solve this big system of equations for all the movements, you can then just work backward to find all the internal forces. A totally different philosophy. So you might be thinking, this is all fascinating history, but how do these fundamental ideas actually power the tools that build our modern world? Well, it turns out that second idea, the displacement method, or stiffness method, that became the absolute engine of the digital revolution in engineering. It is the core concept behind pretty much every single piece of structural analysis software used today. So how does this software actually work? It's pretty cool. It takes a huge complex structure, a skyscraper, a bridge, and it digitally chops it up into thousands, sometimes millions of tiny, simple pieces. These are called elements. Then, it uses that stiffness method to build a gigantic system of equations describing how every single one of those tiny pieces is connected. It creates this enormous digital puzzle. And then the computer just solves it, all at once, finding all the forces and all the movements in a matter of seconds. Which, of course, leads us to a really important final question. With software this powerful, software that can solve these mind-bogglingly complex problems in the blink of an eye, is the job of the human engineer becoming obsolete? The answer is no way, absolutely not. And here's why. The software is only as good as the model you give it. Think back to that Dallas Cowboys facility. That wasn't a computer error. That was a human error, a mistake in the inputs. The computer is brilliant at crunching the numbers, but it takes an engineer's creativity, their judgment, their gut intuition to build the right model in the first place. They have to ask the right questions and most importantly, know when the computer's answer just doesn't feel right for the real world. So yeah, technology is an amazing, powerful tool, but it's still human ingenuity that keeps our world standing.